Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today I'm going to be making a video for beginners. Because I was a beginner once over a decade ago, hard to believe it's been that long already, and I find that these videos are especially helpful for those that are getting started in astrophotography, so it's a way for me to pay it forward and kind of remember the time I was a beginner and, and help people out. So today's video is going to be two parts. The first part is going to be setting up the Celestron Nexstar Evolution Mount, tripod, telescope, and a Celestron StarSense Auto Align, a super cool accessory that will make your life with the evolution so easy, frankly. So part one, I'm going to be setting up all the equipment you see here. So I'm gonna show you how to install and put everything together and get it ready to go. And then in part two, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Celestron Nexstar Evolution Mount with the StarSense Auto Align using the Celestron Sky Portal app. With that said, we'll go ahead and jump into this first part here and show you how to get all the equipment set up. Now just a quick note on the packaging, Celestron does an awesome job packaging their products. And the reason I mention this is you really wanna make sure that you keep the foam that your mount, telescope, and tripod come packaged in. Each one of these is going to have custom fit foam. This is important to keep this because if you ever travel to a dark sky site or somewhere that you need to transport your telescope, this is going to be the thing that keeps them the safest. Additionally, if you ever need to send your telescope back to Celestron for any reason, they're going to want the product shipped back to them in the original factory foam to ensure safety. So yeah, just make sure when you get a next star evolution that you keep the packaging. Uh, I feel like you know a lot of beginners will throw this away. Don't do that, hang on to it, and then you can make sure that your product stays safe wherever you go. Okay, so for setting up the tripod, the first thing you want to do is just make sure that you spread the legs all the way. Sometimes when you're spreading them out, you might think they are, but then when you set up your telescope, you'll see it's not level, which is a problem. So just make sure that these are pulled all the way out. And to do that, I like to grab them at the bottom, give them a nice pull. Then grab them at the bottom here, pull, and push that one out. And now I should have a nice level surface here to work with. Now one big thing with altitude azimuth mounts is you want to make sure that they are level for the best tracking. So there is a bubble level that is integrated into here that you can use. You can see I, my floor is not quite level. Uh, if you want to use like an actual level and uh, put it across the top of the surface here, you can do that as well. And then the other nice thing is these legs are adjustable for height. So if you're taller, uh, you can just unscrew and Celestron includes nice little indicator marks to show you where uh, each height corresponds to and helps, helps basically get things level in that way. So yeah, adjustable legs there. And just overall, uh, a good quality tripod that's included with the Evolution. Now just to give you a closer look at the tripod markings here, the black graduations are five inches apart and the indented graduations are one inch apart. This can be really helpful at star parties if you need to quickly raise the telescope for adults to be able to view, or if you need to lower the tripod for children to be able to view. So it allows you to quickly level the tripod, which is pretty handy. Okay, to finish the tripod off, I'm just going to install the accessory tray now. So we'll just slip this over the threaded shaft here and line it up with the tripod legs. Take the washer with the flat side and put the flat side up against the accessory tray. And then I'm just holding that in place and I'll use the uh, little locking knob here and thread this up. All right, and just like that, you're done with the tripod. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and install the Nexstar Evolution mount to the tripod. So to install this, first thing you want to do is make sure that this post on the tripod goes into this hole in the mount, and that's going to line everything up. Once that's done, you're going to rotate the mount so that these little slots here fall into the slot on the tripod. And then, once that's done, you just lock these three locking bolts here, and the mount will be locked to the tripod. So, I'm gonna go ahead and install the mount by centering that post. There we go. And then I'm gonna turn it so those slots fall into place. Perfect. And then 
I'm going to go ahead and tighten these locking knobs. There's one. Two. And three. So now the mount is secured to the tripod and it's ready to be used. One cool thing I want to point out about the Nexstar Evolution mount is it does have adjustable clutches. So if I just slightly loosen this orange knob in the center, I can actually move the entire azimuth axis, which is pretty neat, and then relock that down. And the same thing for the altitude axis. So let me turn that for you. I can loosen that and I can turn the altitude axis as well. So this is great. If you, for some reason, don't have power, you can still manually use the telescope. And if you prefer a certain orientation to store your telescope, you can adjust these as well. So that is how you secure the mount to the tripod. Now, before installing the telescope, I just wanna talk about the clamping system real quick. I just wanna make sure that when you install the telescope that you do it properly. Uh, it's very easy to just have you know, a quarter of the clamp grasping the rail or half the clamp grasping the rail. You really want to make sure that the rail is grabbed 100% by this claw. So to do that, I recommend using two people to install the telescope. The first person slides the telescope in and holds it in place. Make sure that that rail is being grabbed completely and then the second person clamps it down nice and tight. And that way you know that your telescope is not going to fall out and that it's secured completely. Now I know I just said to use two people when installing the telescope, but I'm gonna break my own advice for this video and do it myself. However, I am holding the left handle very securely and I've got my right hand under the telescope. So I'm going to just go ahead and mount this. Now the way you want to do this is this bottom piece here actually has some spring to it. So you want to enter from the bottom and then turn it up into the top. So that's what I'm going to do. So enter in the bottom and then turn it up there. And then I'm going to hold that securely as I tighten the locking knob. Okay, now everything is nice and tight, but notice I did not let go of the handle or under the scope. I'm going to look down from the back and make sure that that clamp is securely being held. And it is, you can actually see that it is, uh, this rail is being completely clamped down. So now the telescope is installed. One thing I highly recommend doing after mounting the telescope is to make sure that it's balanced. To drive home this point about balancing, take a look at the rear cell. This is where the primary mirror of the telescope is housed and the primary mirror is where most of the weight is. So just right there, the telescope is already back heavy. Once you fully assemble it with these star sense and the diagonal and an eyepiece and maybe even a finder scope, it's extremely back heavy. So it's important that you never mount the telescope using the front of the rail or the middle of the rail. This will cause a large weight imbalance. Now the clutch on the Evolution is pretty strong. It can handle minor weight imbalances, but it's not fail proof. It can't handle drastic weight imbalances. So what would happen if you use the middle or the front of the rail, your clutch would slip and your equipment could come crashing down this way into the mount and damage itself. So you just wanna make sure that you're balanced. To make sure of that, well, I like to grip the handle or put my hand under the telescope and then lightly disengage the clutch and just kind of get a feel for it. So as you can see, I'm going to lightly let go here and it appears that everything is in balance. Maybe it's off just a little bit to the rear, but overall it's, uh, it's pretty good. And as I mentioned, this clutch can handle minor imbalances. So this is just fine and I'll go ahead and tighten that down. So again, just to reiterate, never mount using the front of the rail or the middle of the rail. Always use the back of the rail and put that part into the saddle and you should be good to go. All right, just as the Evolution was packaged well in its own foam, so is the StarSense Auto Line. So the next step is to go ahead and get this installed to the telescope. First thing you're going to want to do is grab your set of screws here. 
Um, I'm actually not going to be using the hand controller today because I want to show you how to use it with your phone using the Celestron Sky Portal app, which I think is more handy anyway. Uh, so this is the uh, Schmidt Cassegrain bracket that's pre-installed, which is what I'll be using today. If you have a Newtonian or anything that uses your standard Vixen style dovetail shoe, uh, you can actually swap the star sense. I've shown how to do this in a previous video, so you can check that out as well. Okay, first step in installing the star sense auto align is to remove these two screws. Okay, there we go. Remove the star sense from its mounting bracket. Install the star sense bracket using the longer screws that the star sense comes with. The way I like to install the bracket is to just get one screw started first. So I'm not tightening it down, there's still room for it to move, and then I'll get the second screw started as well. Now just drop the star sense and its mount onto the bracket. Secure the star sense mount to the bracket using the included locking bolts. To get the best performance with your star sense, you really want to make sure that these locking screws are tightened down. Uh, if they're not tightened all the way, the star sense mount will actually wobble on top of the bracket and that's not going to give you the best results there so you really want to make sure that you tighten these bolts down so there's no wobble in the mount in the bracket it's all just nice and secure one thing that's great about star sense as well is when you're done using it and you want to transfer it to a different telescope or something like that you can literally just pop it off the bracket and if there's a bracket on another telescope drop it right on secure it and you'll have to recalibrate it, but that's it and you're ready to go again. So StarSense is really convenient in that it can be taken on and off if you're not using it or if you want to swap it around. And last but not least, for StarSense to communicate with the evolution mount, we just need to plug it in. So I'll touch the cable into the StarSense and then into auxiliary port number one. One of the main features of the evolution mount is the built-in Wi-Fi control. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to be using the StarSense hand controller today because I want to control this with my phone. However, if you were going to use the StarSense hand controller, it will just plug right into auxiliary port number two, or there's also two auxiliary ports in the base of the mount and you can use those as well if you want it to hang down lower. Now just a couple other things before I head outside for part two. And that is the rear cell here. If you have an Edge HD, you're going to have two mirror locks. So the way that a Schmidt Cassegrain focuses is you have a threaded rod here essentially and that pushes and pulls this primary mirror forward and backward as you focus. Once these mirror locks are engaged, that mirror isn't going to move anymore so you don't want to try and focus the telescope. So the proper way to focus an Edge HD, make sure that your mirror locks are loosened, find a star or whatever and focus it using the focuser down here. Once you've found the proper focus, then you can tighten down your mirror locks if you're going to stay at that focus. Then if you're going to change focus, you have to undo the mirror locks and focus. If you don't want to bother with the mirror locks, just leave them loosened and that is totally fine. So again, this only really applies to the Edge HD series. If you bought a normal Schmidt Cassegrain, you won't have these mirror locks, um, but they do kind of help in locking down your focus for the night if you find that you really hit that sweet spot. I'm gonna remove my diagonal. And I do have a aftermarket visual back here. This is just gonna unthread. And this exposes kind of Celestron's standard Schmidt cast grain threads. These are two inch by 24 threads per inch. And you can install a folk reducer, camera, whatever you need to these threads, as long as you just have the, the right adapters that will attach to this like a T adapter. 
Looking at the rear cell further here, I have an upgraded two inch diagonal here. This allows me to use the smaller one and a quarter inch eyepieces, or I can remove that adapter and use the larger two inch eyepieces. So this is a Celestron Luminos 23 millimeter eyepiece. This is a gigantic eyepiece, part of Celestron's uh, premium eyepiece line, the Luminos. So I can go ahead and install that and I'm uh, ready to go for the evening. If I'm done visually observing for the night and I wanna image the moon or the planets or something like that, installing a planetary camera is also very easy. I'm just going to uh, loosen my eyepiece and store it in the accessory tray. Then I will put back my 1.25 inch eyepiece adapter and tighten that down. Okay, I'll loosen this, pop this out, and then my planetary camera will drop right in. There we go. And now I'm ready to image the planets or the moon and, and this setup will be just fine for that. If you're wanting to do more deep sky astrophotography with a DSLR or dedicated astrophotography camera, be sure to check out my Back Focus 101 episode on the eight inch Edge HD because that does have specific back focus requirements. So you'll wanna see that video to see how that is set up. A tip I have when using a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope is to get it outside about two to three hours before you plan on observing. This will allow the telescope tube to acclimate to the outside temperature, kind of get those air currents that are inside the tube to calm down a little bit and give you the sharpest, clearest views that you can get. Do you have to do that? No, but if you want the absolute best view given any clear evening, having this telescope outside a bit early is really going to help with that. The last thing that you need to do before you go outside is to download the Celestron Sky Portal app on your phone or tablet, and then you'll be ready to go and we'll start part two. All right, everyone, well, that wraps up part one of my two-part series on using the Celestron StarSense Auto Align with the Nexstar Evolution. In part two, I'm going to show you how this all works, so hopefully that's a little bit more exciting than this equipment setup video was today. However, I hope that you did find this helpful. As a few reminders, make sure to keep your packaging and your foam always when you buy a quality telescope. Uh, number two, make sure that your tripod is as level as possible for the best tracking results. On an altitude azimuth or alp azimuth like this one, it is really critical that it is level. Uh, make sure that your clutches are engaged and that when you mount your telescope, that you make sure that the clamp is really grasping this entire rail and just do a decent balance on it. If you do all those things, you should have a very successful first night out, an exciting first night out, checking out stars and planets, maybe, if, maybe the moon if it is out. So with all that said, hope you join me in part two. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this video helpful and thanks for supporting my channel. Hope you have a great day and clear skies.